What is the role of Interpol in dealing with digital threats? How does it help governments and businesses around the globe to fight cybercrime and build better resilience? Ladies and gentlemen, to answer these questions, I give you Mr. Jürgen Stock, Secretary General, Interpol. Thank you, Alexander. Let me start by thanking Bison and the Spur ecosystem for the invitation. The Cyber Polygon events are always a fantastic opportunity to take stock of the global threat landscape we face, both across the public and the private sector. We have seen how our world became increasingly digitalized over the past decades. That digitalization has been brutally accelerated by the pandemic. This digital transformation allowed our societies to avoid a complete standstill. However, it also created a broader playing field for cyber criminals. I see it as a cascading effect. More internet users, more mobile devices, e-commerce, electronic transactions and electronic communication, more individuals online with low levels of digital security awareness, more targets. As in any battle plan, the weakest flank is the point of entry that brings everything down. The generally poor awareness of cybersecurity and cyber hygiene amongst all users has led to a dramatic increase in the number of cybercrime victims. Another key threat comes with a sharp increase in the number of employees working remotely. The traditional approach by business was to create a safe environment and perimeter for professional transactions. This works if sealed compartments can be enforced. In lockdowns, more commercial and official communications and transactions are being conducted over less secure domestic networks. This added another layer of potential entry points, increasing the vulnerability of corporate networks and thereby also the attack surface for cyber criminals. In 2020, we saw a surge in malicious cybercrime capitalizing on the coronavirus to steal personal information and credentials, cyber criminals gained access to networks which they then exploited for financial gain. Beyond the sheer size of the victim pool, we also noticed some remarkable tailoring efforts by criminal groups. Attackers were taking a more customized approach and targeting specific geographical areas, industries and businesses. This was most evident when subregions at the peak of an ep epidemic wave were targeted by attack vectors from other continents because the pressure on companies and government was at its highest. This dynamic has been compounded by the growing trend of cybercrime as a service products being offered as a more sophisticated and more complete package, lowering the entry barriers for would be cyber criminals. The most troubling example is obviously in malware attacks and in particular ransomware campaigns. Ransom attacks reportedly grew by 150% in 2020 and the amount paid by victims quadrupled. In parallel, the major focus of the disruptive malware campaigns has shifted from individuals and small business to government agencies, but also to those overwhelmed parts of the healthcare sector which have risen to the top of the vulnerable infrastructure scale. One example among many witnessed by Interpol was when an initial intrusion into the network of a private hospital in the Caribbean region was detected last year. Interpol assisted immediately by providing mitigation actions. We worked alongside local authorities and industry partners over the course of the following month and the intrusion was successfully foiled. This averted both an imminent ransomware attack and a likely shutdown of the hospital itself. Another example was when we supported our partners in Ireland after CyberTech using the Conti ransomware had shut down national medical services. Following its detection, Interpol worked around the clock to deliver incident response with the help of private partners and issue detailed alerts to other member countries worldwide to prevent similar attacks. Overall, we are facing a new reality from a year and a half ago. The threats are more pervasive 
and they are primed to inflict greater disruptions than ever. However, the Interpol model allows us to scale up our response at different levels. In the immediate, it meant providing early warning on vulnerabilities detected by Interpol and fusing police and industry intelligence into actionable findings on attacks replicated across the globe. This is very much a counter wave exercise. Indeed, many of these attacks were not geographically limited. As our analysis of malware samples revealed, the same snake ransomware attacking a hospital in Germany was also used in Japan. And a separate attack vector used in the Middle East and North Africa region was seen in the Czech Republic. This all the while Nigerian groups were hijacking corporate websites to defraud European governments desperately looking to procure essential protective equipment. So while the face of cyber threats has morphed to exploit the pandemic, one thing stood unchanged. Cybercrime remains an inherently cross-regional, cross-sector global issue. Yet a global threat does not imply a one-size-fits-all solution. From a law enforcement perspective, each terror and each region has specific features that need to be taken into account. This is why Interpol is structuring its operations around regional task forces, such as our very successful ASEAN Cybercrime Operations Desk in Southeast Asia, which is being replicated in West Africa thanks to support from the United Kingdom. Outside of specific incidents and investigations, we have also made capacity building and awareness raising two effective weapons in our arsenal. For instance, we have released dedicated awareness campaigns targeting those weak links in global defenses. The average online user with poor cyber hygiene, where we have partnered with national security agencies to reinforce individual defenses and close those dangerous entry points. Simply put, no region or country can claim to be immune from it. No region or country can claim that the source of every single criminal attack or the response to it is to be found purely within its borders. Malicious domains are a good example of this, where so many components, like the registration of the domain, the IP address, can involve multiple countries. The role of Interpol is to allow member countries to access and share our unique combination of sources, data sets and processing capacity to enhance our understanding of global threats and to provide vital assistance in these investigations. We do this by bringing together our 194 member countries, each with their own rules and legislations against cybercrime, under a single common framework for the processing of data. Among the various solutions we offer our member countries in this area is Interpol Cybercrime Collaborative Platform, the centralized information hub launched last year for the coordination of global law enforcement operations against cybercrime. This restricted access platform enables operational stakeholders, including our private partners, to share intelligence in a secure environment. The platform has already proved successful in supporting coordinated cross-regional investigations, resulting in the arrest of multiple threat actors. However, if we are to be successful in addressing transnational cybercrime, we must ensure that every impacted country has the capacity to contribute to these investigations. In other words, we must empower those of our members with very limited cyber law enforcement capabilities from which a global cyber criminal attack may be launched. A chain is only as strong as its weakest link. This is why Interpol has been providing capacity building activities across the globe to strengthen the capacities and operational skills of police to investigate cybercrime and engage in international police cooperation. In parallel, a strong relationship and effective connection between the private and public sector is pivotal in tackling cybercrime. I cannot understate the importance of our private partners. The companies from which we receive threat data directly, including Bison, continually keep us abreast of the threat landscape and the changes and attacks within. 
It is this direct access to data from both the public and private sectors which help Interpol Cyber Fusion Center provide unique operational support and technical guidance to a number of organizations in recent attacks. The cybersecurity industry is one of many vital allies in this fight. Along with national computer emergency response teams, international organizations and NGOs. We need to harness their collective power. As a global community, we need to leverage their data, resources, tools and expertise to identify the threats, mitigate the risks and prevent cybercrime. Interpol is the focal point with a unique capacity to access and share data directly from its source efficiently and rapidly. Interpol aims to expand and diversify its partnerships as well as aggregate cybercrime victim data globally on its cyber analytical platform to provide more effective and timely support to member countries. As a global community, awareness, education and prevention are also vital. The more we share our experience about these threats and the attack vectors cyber criminals use, the more chances we will have in preventing and stopping the attacks. That's why events like Cyber Polygon are so important. Let me conclude on this note. The need for a global coordinated response has never been greater because it has never been more vital. Ultimately, the pandemic has only been an accelerator of a long running trend. As we move forward, and we will continue to live and work in an environment ever more suited to cybercrime. Working with private industry and public partners is a must to close the cyber enforcement gap. For Interpol, this means leading global efforts in the domain of cyber attribution by leveraging cyber operational and investigative support to bring cyber criminals to justice. This must be our shared objective, public and private sector alike working across our respective boundaries to push the exchange of actionable information on cybercrime so that threats are identified as soon as possible. Awareness is raised about them before they spread globally and mitigating actions are taken. Thank you very much and back to you, Alexander.